All right, so bank and review, because we don't know if Chad's uh, tricorder recording equipment... Chad, Brian, what's exactly. a tricorder from? Uh, that thing? Can you name, can you name the, I don't know, a property that a tricorder would be used in? A, a property? Which uh, series, which uh, sci-fi property oh would use a tricorder? Gosh. Okay, fine. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the American Beer Review Podcast. Good times with good friends requires good beer. Lucky for us, we know how to pick all three. We're a group of friends who grew up in the Pacific Northwest, giving us a jump start on our craft beer journey. Join us today while Brian... I pride myself on not getting to know other people, so do not put that on me. <laughs> Alec. So the bananas up until like the 60s were an entirely different species of banana. And Chad. It hit me like a back in bar. <laughs> Review some beer, talk about beer topics, and whatever else comes up. We invite you to pour yourself a drink and hang out with us. Number one, we're going on an away mission to Portland. Potentially, we might lose a red shirt, or two, or three. Sounds mm-hmm. like Star Trek. There you go. Miles O'Brien's going to get stuck in the in the teleporter. And up with three accidents. arms. Yep, and come back. But then, in the last five minutes of the episode, everything's going to be resolved and everything's great. Other than like the red shirts that are inexplicably and, gone, never mentioned again. No mourning, no funeral. Eh, they see. they save they save them in the transporter buffer, and they just reinitialize them every day. That's the deep dark secret that they're going to reveal someday. I didn't think it would be the recorder that would have a malfunction. I assumed it would be the podcast hosts who will have a malfunction. That is the goal because we're just going not to an being race. could be we do we could do be, a good could job be, of our could podcast. Be a matter of both we 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 pace ourselves while we podcast. Not at a NASCAR race. That's that's but, what. But I'm... But we're going to the NASCAR race with other responsible adults. So as soon as that happens, the backstops are off. I don't know who you think the responsible adults that we're going with are. The ones who have lived longer than us. They're more responsible. Have Only my one of them is. He's older than us. Yeah, he, I, Just because they live longer. You're banking mean on they're... my mother to babysit the rest of us? She's given up. She's oh, given yeah. up on the entire thing. It was, they have provided shelter. Everyone better be able to figure it out. That's that's basically what it is. Yep, kind of where it's at. So anyway, this is a emergency episode that you may be hearing at some point. Well, you'll probably hear it. Just depends on when. So yeah. take all of our uh magic timely, of editing. Yeah. Take all of our timely comments and news as a grain of salt and we're gonna try to stick just to a beer review. So that it makes more sense in the future. We Good are luck, drinking baby. today a woman I picked up from Battleground Washington. This is Barrel Mountain Brewings, No Bad Days, an IPA at six point two percent alcohol by volume. Uh, 55 IBUs, where beer and adventure meet is their slogan. Brian is looking up. Ooh, that is not what I was expecting based on the can. Uh, do you I know what I'm not, actually I looking totally up? I totally did not expect that either. I was expecting... Um, I forgot I, it was an IPA. I thought it was going to look like a stout. Because it's got a lie. dark can. Yeah, exactly. Just way to judge can. a book by its cover. A little bit. Uh, it is. It's a very uh, dark brown, green, uh, foresty themed can. And I forgot that it was an IPA because I think I bought this like a month ago, and it's been sitting in the fridge here. Where uh, beer since then, an adventure meet. I think no bad days. No bad days. I was unemployed, so there were no bad days <laughs> uh, at the time. That was the theme I was going for. I was looking for like a whatever unemployed Needed some mojo or something. Uh, do you know what the first thing I actually looked up was? When no, I don't know what a tricorder is. Have you no. have you uh, checked this in? No. I didn't even pull up Untapped. I pulled up something else. I I have lived in Washington for other than college. No, you didn't know where Battleground you know where is? Battleground I know. Is? I know where it is. So, Battleground. Do you know why it is called Battleground? Oh. That's uh, what I looked up. I think I have, but no, I don't remember. A standoff between the group of the Klickitat peoples and a military force from the Vancouver barracks, which had recently transitioned to a U.S. Army post. Way back in 18 and 55. All right. So NASCAR related 
we'll be driving through Battleground. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. On, I on our way I debated there. saying it when so Battleground and how it didn't get its name changed because I mean Auburn, where we all grew, grew up, up was the OG famously, name was so much better. Yeah, so, so much better. Slaughter. slaughter. Yeah, slaughter. At some point, you don't go Battleground, guys. And, and then when you just hear canceled, and then, and then when you hear about like slaughter, what the hell was that? Oh, it was named after a guy. Yeah. What What do you mean? What was he a colonel? I think something yeah, like I, that. It was like yeah. Colonel Slaughter. Even better. The story just kept getting better and better. And like, oh no, Auburn. Oh okay. Yeah, so, I don't know how they. And we're like the one. third most popular because you got like Auburn, Maine, and then you've got you know Auburn, the college, like California. Auburn, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, them too. So number five. Now what do we have? We have a train museum. Um, I that. have had this before. Have you? Yeah. I had it about a month into the pandemic. Hmm. Did you guys go down there or was it like you no, got a local No, I lab? went to like Cascades. This was the time I think I went in there and they wouldn't even take cash. Oh, really? Because like, it was yeah. back when people thought it like... Stuck to things? Yeah. And so they like wouldn't take my cash. And it was shortly after that that I stopped carrying cash. Where were you carrying cash in 2020? I always carried cash beforehand. That's how we did our spending money. Oh. Is I like pulled my spending money out and like that's all I had. Like to buy whatever I wanted with. So I've had it before. Um, but yeah, that's that's my story. Um, this is Battleground, or sorry, uh, um, Barrel Mountain's uh, flagship IPA. Is it? Yeah. Using uh, five malts and five hops. Oh, okay, so pretty good blend. To achieve our perfect balance. You guys are getting pineapple at the very end. I think that's kind of what they're playing with on the... Uh, mm. What are they're, the hops? They're kind of playing with that on the can art. Having uh, the hops a little uh, kind of explosion. Are you sure that's not a pine of? cone? They only named four. Yeah. Looks like a hop. Looks like a hop leaf. But they're doing uh they're doing the C's. I thought they were pineapples to begin with, and then they're Columbus. Hops. Those are hops. Cascade. Yeah. But I'm kind of getting like a little bit of pineapple at the end. Of, I, don't I feel know, like we're having two different conversations. We are. Here. We have three different <laughs> conversations because I'm not paying attention to either side. <laughs> anyway, what the three C's? Cascade. Four. <laughs> There's and, four. Four C's. Okay. Cascade, Chinook. Yep. Um, yep. Citra? Centennial? Uh, Centennial? No, they didn't have Centennial. Citra? Yeah, Citra. Uh, is there... Oh, One more named after a dead white guy. Columbus? Yep. I, I know that. He's kind of like the dead white guy. What? He's like the dead white guy. Yeah, I suppose so. Um... I'm going to try and drink this now. What was the a- ABV on that? I read it. 6.3? Yeah. That's drinkable. It's very dr- It's very drinkable. I can see why it's their flagship. Dare I, mm-hmm. dare I say it's it's on the juicier side? Mm-hmm. Am I getting that right? Am I using juicier right? Um, like I'm getting let... Yeah. Like you're getting like... You get way more citrusy okay. than than pine and bitter. Yeah, so I should go more citrus. Yeah, but I mean, you could call it a little juicy, but yeah, yeah, like you're getting more of like a citrus, and um, it's definitely not overly piney if you're getting any pine to it. I think the fact that they're using, like you talk about the five hops, five malt, like you are getting a kind of like well-rounded blend of blend. stuff. There's not... There was another one we talked about recently that was like that, where nothing is like spiking. It's just kind of like hitting that's all what, the parts. That's exactly what I was thinking something in my head and it didn't click till you said that. It's just the five and five. They're all just playing together really nicely. And I, I couldn't put my finger on it. Like I, I've tasted this beer before, but I've probably tasted different parts of it. From other beers, mm. from whatever they've highlighted from the different uh, pops in the malt. So you've had this one. Have you had any, any of their others? Uh, that's a great question. Let me see what I can find out. Do they have uh, 
742 different beers or do they have 12 really good ones? 28. Oh, so they're narrowing in on just their stuff. Yeah, I've had their stout before. Yeah. Oh, I really thought I had more, but that's it. That's all I've seen. Just the stout? Yeah, I've had this one and their stout. But I gave them both, you know, fours. So, yeah, they're just kind of really doing... I mean, they got a like the variety of different things, but they're really just kind of sticking with their kind of core amounts. And who knows? Maybe they're just not publishing stuff, but not putting it on. Uh, yeah, but yeah, they kind of are, which gets... I think was a little more like uh, we've talked about more like an Iron Horse. Yeah, where or even No Lie, where they're not making a ton of different stuff. No Lie, I think, has branched out a little more, but they're just kind of hey, this is what we make. Yeah. I wonder yeah, how much of that has to do with like being more of a maybe smallish town brewery. Yeah. That does some distribution is like that kind of feels like a vibe of like we just make like we're not trying to bring in all these weird things to mm-hmm. get We built a core we built a core of beers that that people in our area will enjoy, come in and enjoy. Yeah. And it supports us. We don't really need to make something new and goofy well, to and bring I, in other, and I gotta to, imagine, to bring other people in. We, yeah. we're, I gotta imagine uh, Battleground is probably a point one Tulsa town. Yeah, that's a great question. So there. they probably got. Uh, Are they the, a very capped? They're probably the brewery for yeah. anybody who's not drinking macro in. Although Battleground's not all that far of a drive from. Vancouver. It's really not all that far from Portland. Uh, it's a nice pit stop. Or Olympia. I, I mean, it's somewhere. not on I five, so you're having to go off. It's not terribly far no, away no, no, though. No. I think it's only like two, maybe two and a half hours away from where I'm working now. So. Oh yeah, it's it's, it's under 100 miles from us. Yeah, it's a nice day trip. Had it on our road trip list. Yeah. Yeah, that we'll never take. Um, well, we are taking a road trip. Oh, within yes. a short detour of yes, battleground. Yes, you are correct. Um, yeah, I talking about Tulsa. I mean, I don't know that they're that they're getting. What do you think? What's your bet? Are they the one? Are they the one brewery in in battleground? Well, they're absolutely the largest, and I would say they're. Mm, I'm going to say they're the only one listed on Untapped. There may I, be. I would say three. You go three two, in battleground. Two that two that aren't at the untapped level yet. No, there, there might yeah, be yeah. a proto Lost Woods yeah, style yeah. before they had a, a spot. There are two breweries in Battleground. All right, what's the other one? Northwood Public House and Brewery. Okay. I'm looking to see if I've ever had anything from them, but I'm gonna go. With, I'm gonna guess no. Um. Well, now anything that we say about this is going to have a bias because we haven't tried the other. Yeah, but although now I put it under tapped and that one doesn't show up and it just shows <laughs> Little Dipper Brewing Company in Battleground. So there might be as many as three. A third of a Tulsa. Yep. Mm. So. Well, at the current Tulsa number. <laughs> Which we correct. Do not, that we, that we yeah. do not think is correct in the first place. Uh, or I do not the, think at, is correct the, in the first the, place. At the first of the year, we will uh, reweigh the standard Tulsa. It's like, uh, you gotta wait for the census. Yeah. There you go. It'll be two years trailing. Mm-hmm. So, it is. I think one of you guys said it's a, it's an easy drinking, light, it's not overly hopped, it's not overly... It's not even, like, heavily malted. It's not a heavily malted IPA. It's, it's clean, um, light colored. Yeah, Just, when I heard, like, five malts in the malt bill... I was like, oh. a lot more body, a lot, yeah, crazier. But it was, and how light it is, so it was like they just layered upon layered um, the grains. It was just, you could have told me that was one hop and one malt, and I think I would have believed you. Mm, it tastes a little bit more sophisticated than that, but yeah. Yeah. But if you handed this to a brand new uh, IPA drinker, I don't think you would run them off with how technical 
this beer really is. No, and I wouldn't chalk it as like a Northwest IPA. Like no. we've talked about. This Mm-mm. is not going to scare away. This has very, br- I think this has very broad appeal. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you could take this as an IPA across state lines easy. Yeah, that a lot of other places um, and people would find it approachable, drinkable. Like yeah. you, dare I say, with our West Coast IPA uh, reviews so far, you could probably sling this as a West Coast IPA across most of the country. No. Mm. I think it's a very good IPA, which is why they labeled it that way. I don't think you're labeling it as a West Coast or definitely not a Northwest IPA. Very good, though. Uh, where do you fridge it? Brian? That's a good question. Um, I don't know that I, I'm getting it out very often. Probably um, beer fridge, grabbing a six-pack every once in a while. Um, 12 ounce cans having it just as like a alternating into my cycle. Yeah. So my wife's got friends slash clients that lived, grew up in in battleground, oh. which is also part of why I, I grabbed it. Uh, if they were coming up, I would have them grab me a six pack on the way and beer fridge it. Uh, I think if I lived in battleground and this is my, Hometown beer, I'm definitely not mad about it. And oh, it's yeah. definitely a beer fridger for me. Um, and I go out of, out of my way to find it on a consistent basis. I don't think so. Yeah. It's good, but it's just. Um, very good. But with. Um, Without that umami. Exactly. <laughs> um, this is one of those beers I'm getting a lot of. It kind of lingers on me. And when it's 80 degrees outside, I don't know if I can do it. This is a this would be a beer fridge for me um in the fall. Fall okay. into winter for me. Interesting, because I really would think more of like the lightness of it um when the weather is warmer like it's been. This would be an easier drinking one that's not gonna like fill me. Like it's I, not like I'm still getting an IPA-ness without it being like uh like a heavy, weighed down kind of flavor and stuff. Uh, I, I'm getting I'm getting more malt way down mm. for me on this with this beer. Okay. Um, but I also start getting out of my IPAs as it starts getting warmer because now sours are a thing. Yeah, mm. as soon as uh, the first time I was introduced to Gose, Goza Goza Goza. Uh, so I s- I, I've started like shifting my summer beers towards that. Okay, so and getting s- out of the IPA. So I see where you're going. So I also tend to drink less IPAs in the summer, but for an IPA, I think this tends towards warmer weather IPA, mm-hmm. which is I think where Brian was going than a colder weather. So yeah. if, I don't know. I don't but, think you're gonna go wrong. No, you anytime. can't go wrong no. with it. I don't think so at all. All right. Uh, well, our glasses are empty, which is good because it is pouring down rain and it was 80 degrees when I got here and left my car windows down. So hopefully your glasses are empty too and we will catch you next time. Quick to the cars. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I know. I saw that too. I was like, what the fuck was that noise? <laughs> It's, it was like 80 degrees. I'm like, all right, I'll just leave the window well, I cracked. Thought, I thought they said some. <coughs> like... If you are picking up what we were putting down, please like and subscribe on your podcast platform of choice. And reach out to us at A Beer Review on social media if you have a beer you would like us to review.